Welcome to Walker of Worlds podcast. My name's Rachel and this is a podcast where we step behind the veil to take a look at some long lost and little known spooky stories and urban legends. Today we're looking at a story which is yet to develop but which may become prominent in future years. London's public transport is said to be some of the best in the world, coming in closely behind that of Hong Kong. While getting north to south has always been relatively easy, going east to west has been seen as problematic for a number of decades. Crossrail, which finally opened in 2022 under the name the Elizabeth Line, was first proposed back in 1943. Then, it was known as the County of London Plan. The term crossrail, as in a railway line that crosses east to west, was coined in the 1974 London Rail Study Report. We're going to skip the nitty-gritty history of crossrail because, as you can see from the dates, it was discussed and planned for a long time before anything actually happened. In fact, work didn't begin until 2009. The official start date was May 15th, 2009, when piling works began on the Canary Wharf station. Queen Elizabeth opened the line on May 17th, 2022 as part of her Platinum Jubilee celebrations. London also has the Jubilee line, which was named in honour of her 1977 Silver Jubilee. Throughout this podcast, we're going to refer to the line as Crossrail. It may now be called the Elizabeth line, but Crossrail was the umbrella name under which many companies constructed the new railway. A project of this size moves a lot of soil and rubble, 7 million tonnes in fact. A lot of it went into constructing a new wetland nature reserve in Essex, just outside of London. And while I'd love to sit here and wax lyrical about the engineering that went into this project, that's not why we're here. We're here for strange and spooky stories. With 7 million tonnes of earth being excavated for Crossrail, they were going to be digging through some interesting places. And as it passes through central London, the new tunnels found all kinds of cemeteries, burial pits and other long-forgotten people and places. And that's why we're here. In 2018, four years before the line opened, although it was due to opening in 2018 um, it was delayed until 2020 and then was delayed again due to covid a paranormal investigator claimed that the new railway would be haunted while the elizabeth line isn't a part of london underground and is operated by another company entirely a lot of the line does dive beneath the streets and buildings of the city and as we've discussed before london underground is haunted very very haunted the investigator made his claims because of all of the excavations that surrounded crossrail approximately 26 miles of the 60 mile line are underground. Archaeologists were present in and around the Crossrail project for 14 years. UK planning law requires some form of archaeological work if it is deemed likely that a construction project will disturb archaeologically significant layers. In London, it is hard to avoid areas of archaeological significance. Human habitation in the area dates back over 10,000 years and there has been an urban centre in the city of London for the last 2,000. Our first stop is London Street is Liverpool Street Station, sorry. The archaeological dig site was based at what is now Crossrail's East Ticket Hall. 40 metres below the surface of the street, London's newest trains pull in and out of the station with a regularity of 24 trains an hour. The excavation had the site coat LSS85 and found burials in what was once the vegetable garden of the Royal Bethlehem Hospital. In the early 15th century, Royal Bethlehem Hospital began to receive patients who needed psychiatric care. It's widely widely believed that this was the place where patients who were in dire need of a high level of care were sent, and so a new name for the hospital was born, a name which came to signify chaos, disorder, uproar and madness. The hospital was nicknamed Bedlam. The hospital continues its work into the 21st century and its often jaded history can be found online. However, recent assessments of the hospital rate it as having improved greatly over the years. The Bedlam burial ground was found at a depth of 3 metres. Below that, at 6 metres from street level, were Roman suburbs. It is estimated that by the time the burial site closed in 1739, 25,000 people had been buried there. Most of them were from the margins of society, plague victims and the poor. During the crossrail dig, 60 scientists worked on the site and over 300 skeletons were found, removed and recited. In the Liverpool Street Station site alone, archaeologists recorded around 2,000 years of London history. In March 2013, another dig site at Charterhouse Square close to Farrington Station revealed 23 skeletons laid out in two neat rows. Along with the skeletons were various pieces of pottery. Carbon dating placed the bodies as having passed away in around 1350. This indicated that they were plague victims and were laid out in a similar formation to other black plague victims that were found at a burial site in East Smithfield in the 1980s. 
The Black Plague could not survive that long underground, and so after 650 years beneath the streets of London, the bones did not pose a modern-day health risk. But will the spirits their owners one day come back to haunt those who now travel along the Elizabeth Line? The London Underground is already one of the most haunted public transit systems in the world. Farringdon Station, which both Crossrail and the subsequent now named Elizabeth Line pass-through, is reported to be one of the most haunted stations on the system. Farringdon Station was opened in 1863 as the terminus of the Metropolitan Railway and is one of the oldest surviving railway stations in the world. Today it is served by the Circle, Hammersmith and City and Metropolitan Lines as well as the Thameslink route and the Elizabeth Line. While the station has been modernised, its 1922 frontage still remains. Pre-Covid, the station clocked up around 25 million London Underground passengers and around 17 million National Rail passengers per year. Many people commute via Farrington because of its proximity to Old Street, Clerkenwell and Chancery Lane. It is also not, not Bank Station, which is one of the London Underground's most dreaded stations due to its often intricate and confusing tunnels, though that has apparently become easier in recent months with the opening of moving walkways and a new eight entrance in late 2022. This is part of a larger project, which when completed will see Bank Station have 27 new escalators, making it far easier to move around. But anyway, we're not here to talk about, about Bank Station, we're here to talk about Farringdon's ghosts. The platform and tunnels at the station are home to ghostly screams that have been reported by staff and passengers alike, and this story, unlike others, is particularly grisly even for London. Prior to the construction of the Metropolitan Railway, the area around Farringdon Station had been an area of slums and gambling dens. In 1758, 13-year-old Anne Naylor and her sister were apprenticed to the Sarah Met Yard, a mother and daughter who ran a milliner's on Bruton Street in West London. The mother and daughter were both hot-tempered and were known to mistreat any apprentices who had the misfortune to be entrusted to their care. Beatings were common, whilst torture and starvation were everyday occurrences. It was following one particularly savage beating that the unfortunate Anne Naylor died. Her employers attempted conceal, to conceal her demise from the other apprentices by carrying her up to an attic room and taking food up there to keep up the pretense that she was still alive. But realising that the longer they kept her, her, the greater the danger of her crime being discovered, they attempted to dispose of the body by cutting it into small chunks and burning it in their fireplace. However, this gave off a foul smell, so they instead took the remains to an open sumo in Chick Lane near the Farringdon station and dumped them. They were found by the night watchman who reported his grisly discovery to the parish constable who duly informed the coroner, Mr. Umfreville. He, however, presumed them to be the remains of a corpse that had been dissected by the surgeons and therefore declined to summon a jury for an inquest. The dastardly duo would have got away with their crime but for the fact that four years later they argued and the daughter revealed their crime in a fit of rage. They were duly tried at the Old Bailey, sentenced to death and executed on the 19th of July 1768, after which their bodies were given over to the surgeons for dissection. Within a hundred years of their execution, Farringdon Station had opened on the site close to where they had dumped the remains of the poor unfortunate Anne Naylor, and whose ghostly screams were soon being heard by those standing on the platform late at night, or by those passing along the street above the station platforms. We may have already done one podcast on the London Underground's ghost, but here's another story that didn't make it into that episode. The Northern Line winds its way from Edgware and High Barnet in the north to Morton in the south. On the map, the Northern Line is characterised by a black line which slices the city in half. Kennington Station is located in the borough of Southwark, south of the River Thames. Opened in 1890, this station is, interestingly, in both zones 1 and 2. Its surface buildings remain largely unchanged. However, as always, it's what's below the surface that's incredibly interesting. Not all trains terminate at Morden. Some only go as far as Kennington, and in order to turn southbound trains into northbound ones, train drivers use the Kennington Loop. Essentially, this is a giant U-turn for the train through a tunnel which isn't ordinarily accessible to the travelling public. Riding through the Kennington Loop can be a lonely few moments for a driver. Except for the occasional drunk or joy rider who remains on board the train, there is no one else there. Cameras are dotted along the trains and drivers have access to these in order to make sure that doors and carriages are clear. But when you're riding alone in a secluded part of the underground, these cameras suddenly become your enemy. You start seeing things and hearing things, as for a few brief moments, you're all alone. And when you pull back into Kennington, you're glad to see people standing on the platform. Ghostly sightings have been reported in the Kennington Loop for many years. 
One involves the story of a passenger who was trying to board the train as it entered the loop, but was pulled between the carriages and subsequently killed. Older London Underground rolling stock, some of which is still travels the tracks to this day, have doors which allow you to step between the carriages. Newer trains have interconnecting carriages, so there are no doors and are one continuous unit which you can walk along. Some drivers have reported that while traversing the Kennington Loop, the doors have opened and closed by themselves. And it's not just one door, but every door along the length of the train has gone click, 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 click. As well as the doors mysteriously opening and closing, drivers have also reported hearing voices behind them. Voices that should be produced by a train full of passengers. But this is in the loop. The train is empty and the cameras are showing a view of carriages devoid of human life. It's hardly surprising that some drivers don't want to go through the Kennington Loop. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just a glimpse of what could be coming to the Elizabeth Line. Crossrail featured 40 archaeological sites and found tens of thousands of items. It wouldn't be a surprise if ghosts had already been spotted on London's newest railway, just haven't been reported yet. So the next time you descend into the depths of the world beneath London, keep a lookout for what could be the city's newest ghost. If you're interested in the history of Crossrail, there is a book titled Crossrail. So please do feel free to look that up. And if you enjoyed listening to this podcast and enjoy your stories a little on the strange side, please do feel free to check out our website at www.roswellpublishing.co.uk. And until next time, stay spooky.